Good evening there everybody. What is happening? Hopefully you all are having a wonderful day today. So when it comes down to it, I thought that I would talk about this little conversation that I found very particularly interesting. And I don't usually tend to review this channel as much because like I said, usually when I'm reviewing a video, it's usually going to be by a channel that I tend to disagree with more than agree with because that way it's more of in a debate-like manner. But today I'm going to be reviewing a video by this one boxing channel that I've always thoroughly enjoyed watching called The Hat Man Strikes Back. And I think that The Hat Man Strikes Back, even though I don't necessarily agree with everything that he says, I do think that a lot of things that he says are somewhat based in very decent a decent amount of intelligence. I think that he is decently logical and objective. I do think that he has somewhat of great intuition for the sport of boxing. And I've always been a person overall that I've looked at myself as decently intuitive as well, especially with the sport of boxing. That doesn't mean that, you know, I'm extremely intuitive with every other sport of that. I'm extremely intuitive with everything. But usually you tend to find, especially the people who are the most gifted in boxing or maybe, you know, in certain sports or really even in other certain areas, they may be very, very intuitive, at least especially in that area. Well, The Hat Man Strikes Back and the title overall of this video is Anthony Joshua lost and confused ahead of the Usyk rematch question mark. And I think that that's a very interesting question. And I've already kind of talked about this. But the big question about Mr. Anthony Joshua is, will he win that Alexander Usyk rematch? And there's been a certain amount of conversations about Anthony Joshua as a boxer and overall as a person when it comes down to it and the type of adjustments that he can make. And there was a certain amount of criticisms about Anthony Joshua about how he was not able to adapt on the fly against Alexander Usyk in that rematch. And I don't think that Anthony Joshua, I'm not saying that he could not make certain adjustments here and there. I've seen him overall have problems with opponents here and there. But the thing is, is this, I don't think that Anthony Joshua is someone like a Floyd Mayer the Jr. or a Canelo Alvarez or a Terrence Bud Crawford, or, you know, someone of a high, high level that has a high, you know, A plus skill set. And on top of that, he can just adapt on the fly like they can. Anthony Joshua, he can somewhat fight in a multitude of ways, but, you know, he is still in certain areas somewhat limited. And he was in there against the fighter against Alexander Usyk, where Anthony Joshua, I think that he was a little bit timid sometimes to throw back with Alexander Usyk because Usyk is a person that he's just faster than Anthony Joshua. You know, like I said, actually, what that fight actually reminded me of, it reminded me of another version of Floyd Mayer, the junior versus Saul Canelo Alvarez. Two boxers that, in my opinion, you know, decently experienced you know, two high-level boxers. Now, of course, Canelo, in my opinion, he's always been <laughs> decently better than what Anthony Joshua ever has been. But Anthony, I'll give him credit. He is a great fighter to a certain degree. I just don't know if he's going to be remembered as one of the top 10 heavyweights of all time or anything. But what I will say is this, you know, for, you know, the accomplishments that he has, a lot of people do question, you know, how good of a fighter Anthony Joshua is. I do think that he's a great fighter. The big question is about Anthony Joshua is how great of a fighter is he really? And will he be able to get past that of an Alexander Usyk? And that is a very tough task. That's an even bigger task than what an Andrew Ruiz Jr. is. Because Andrew Ruiz Jr., you can adapt to him very, very quickly. Because like I said, he has very slow feet. He has very <laughs> cement black feet when it comes down to meaning what? That basically his feet are almost planted into the ground. Meaning that, you know, the more that you move around him, it's just going to be very hard because he can be very flat-footed and he does not have fast feet. You know, like I said, I compare him to that of a crocodile on land. Very dangerous when it comes down to it. And if you get in the water with it, of course, you're in deep shit. You know, you can possibly get knocked out or killed by that crocodile when it comes down to it because he's very dangerous on the inside. But the more you keep your distance and if you're on land, if you peck that jab out there and, you know, if you're able to move around him, you know, the the chances of you getting bit by that crocodile or snapped overall by Andy Ruiz, all in all, much, much, much lower. So it just is what it is. Alexander Usyk, like I said, when I talked about this last time, I compare him to that of a tiger. He can move very well in water. He can move very well on land. He has very great claws. He has a bite all in all that can basically snap your neck within one punch. The thing is about Alexander Usyk is this, and I don't think that Alexander Usyk is this person that necessarily has one punch knockout power, but he's fast. He's faster than Anthony Joshua. He has higher boxing IQ. He has more weapons at his disposal. Anthony Joshua does have a chance to win this rematch, but if he is going to win this rematch, he's going to have to pull out a performance, in my opinion, that he has never pulled out before. And that is the big reason why I'm just not sure if Anthony Joshua can pull out this rematch. But we'll see what happens. Anyways, Mr. Hatman strikes back. He's going to be talking about this. I thought that it was very particularly interesting. Let's get into it. The impression I get of Anthony Joshua these days is of a man who doesn't have any great intuition, who doesn't really trust 
his own instincts, or maybe he doesn't have very strong instincts, because the elite fighters, the best, the greats, intuit a lot of things. Like, for example, Muhammad Ali, when he fought George Foreman, he just knew that dancing and fighting his usual fight wouldn't get the job done in Zaire. And what he did by playing rope dope was counterintuitive to a lot of people, including his own corner. But Ali told him to shut up and he said, I know what I'm doing. And indeed, he did know what he was doing. Tyson Fury, when he got dropped by Steve Cunningham heavy in the second let me say this. I agree 100% with what Hatman is saying. And I think all in all that it's a very intelligent thing to say that because, you know, there's always so many people that whenever it comes to boxing, like I remember when I was watching the Jake Paul versus Tyron Woodley fight and one of my friends, he was over, we were watching it with me and my family. And he said, well, that just proves that anyone can, you know, do boxing. Well, anyone can participate in boxing. Anyone can participate in a sport, but not everyone can be on the high, high level. Meaning what? That, you know, you can try out boxing, but you may not be on the Saul Canelo Alvarez or Floyd Mayer the Jr. or Manny Pacquiao level. Because if you're going to get to that level, you have to be just naturally very, very intelligent. There's certain people out there that if you were to meet them when it comes down to it, they may not seem like the sharpest tools in the shed. They may not seem like they're overly intelligent. But then when they get in the boxing ring or maybe they're a talented accountant, maybe all in all they're a talented mathematician, you know, maybe they're good in another category, maybe they're very good at, you know, whatever it may be, basketball, whatever it is, everyone has their own specific talents, you know, when it comes down to it, they just get it more than what other people do, you know, let's say that you're a talented artist, let's say that you're a drawer, you know, I've always been someone interested in art, you know, and I'm not going to be super braggadocious about my drawing abilities, I would say that in terms of a drawer at my best, I maybe was about an A minus, but there are certain people that I remember in my high school class well, you know, when they took the art class, you know, there was just certain things that they could do that I could never do. There were certain shades that they could see to make that I could never make. There were certain lines that they could draw or certain dimensions that they could draw that I could never draw. There were certain things that they would see that I would just not see. So whatever all in all, you know, it is what it is. So many people, you know, all in all, they always like to say, well, anyone can just do anything when it comes down as long as you put in the hard work. Well, I think that to a degree that that is true and somewhat that is a, you know, good message. But not everyone all in all can be on the best of the best level in terms of whatever art you're performing. You know, just like if you were to talk about a singer, you know, sure, there's there's a lot of great singers. There's a lot of good singers, but not everyone overall can be on the level of, say, you know, just in terms of vocalists. Not everyone can be on the level of a Freddie Mercury or a Frank Sinatra or a Michael Jackson or a James Brown or whoever the hell you want to put up there. You know, Whitney Houston, if we're going to talk about women vocalists. You know, you see a person that is very, very talented and you try to lead them basically to the best to, you know, best point where they can be. But the question is about Anthony Joshua is, does he really have that high boxing IQ? I think that he has more boxing IQ than that of a Deontay Wilder. Because a lot of these guys all in all that you see, like a Floyd Mayer, the junior, a Canelo Alvarez, the coaches overall do show them the basics. But a lot of the stuff over time, they really overall start to develop a very, very good style of their own. A lot of the stuff that they learn, basically, you know, they can pretty much learn by themselves. That's why individual sports are so more entertaining, in my opinion, than what team sports are. And team sports are still great. But at the end of the day, when you have a boxing match, when you have an MMA fight or a tennis match, you know, sure, all in all, you know, the basics have been learned by the coaches. But the intuition and the intelligence overall for the sport and the gifts that that person was gifted with, you really get to see, all in all, how well-rounded they are. And when it comes to Mr. Anthony Joshua, I'm just not sure if he's more well-rounded than Alexander Usyk. He's a person that's a very gifted athlete. He actually is a somewhat decently gifted boxer. I don't think that, you know, he's anywhere near as bad as what a lot of people try to say. But when it comes down to it, do I believe that there is a lot of faults in Anthony Joshua's style? Yes, I do. I don't think that he has necessarily a great head movement. He doesn't have an A great chin. He doesn't always have the fastest or, you know, the bounciest defeat when it comes down to it. It just is what it is. If Anthony Joshua is going to win this fight with Alexander Usyk, he is going to overall have to have a higher degree of boxing intelligence, and I just don't know if he's going to have that. But we'll see what happens. You know, but the best, you know, the best of the best when it comes down to it all in all, uh, like I said, when it comes down to the greatest of all time, like boxing, uh, or excuse me, Hatman, he just mentioned Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury is actually a great example because Tyson Fury, you can just tell that he's a natural in there. You know, when you take, you know, Tyson Fury, when I watch him at the heavyweight division, you know, a lot of people heading into that second Deontay Wilder fight, Tyson Fury said, basically, you know what, I'm going to go right at Deontay Wilder. 
You know how many people thought that that was an insane, crazy thing to do? But Tyson Fury seen something all in all that not a lot of people seen. He's seen the exact same thing that I've seen. And I'm not claiming all in all that I'm a Tyson level Fury boxer or anything like that. But I have a decent amount of intuition when it comes to boxing. And I realize what Tyson Fury's seen. Because if you take a look at some of Deontay Wilder's fights, he doesn't fight on the back foot very well at all. And he's a person that relies a lot on his power when it comes down to it. He's a person all in all that relies a lot on that confidence. And if you push him back, all of a sudden that weapon, that right hand that he uses, it's not going to go away entirely, but it is going to be somewhat nullified. Tyson Fury is a person that just, he has always had a higher boxing skill set than Anthony Joshua, but he's not only had a higher boxing skill set than Anthony Joshua, he has something that Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder just don't seem to have as much of in that category, and that is the boxing IQ. And boxing IQ is learned to a certain degree, but a lot of it is also natural. So when certain people tell you, <clears throat> excuse me, no matter what it may be, and no matter if, you know, you see an artist that is a very talented drawer, or if you, you know, if you're a singer when it comes down to it, or, you know, even a movie director when it comes down to it, or whatever you are, even if you work a regular job, you may be a very talented accountant, you may be a very talented engineer, or, you know, a very talented manufacturer, a very talented overall, you know, uh, uh, what the hell is the uh, one that the people work on the cars? <laughs> I can't, can't think of the name right now overall when it comes to mechanic. You may be a very talented mechanic. There's just certain people all in all, once again, you know, everyone always says, well, if you put the work in, Though the work in is great. Hard work, of course, leads to that. But at the end of the day, like I said, certain people are just more talented mentally and physically in certain areas, in certain ambitions than what other people are. Like I said, you know, you can sit here and try to draw like some of those great artists, you know, out there in the world or those people that you knew in art class, you know, in high school or middle school. But there's going to be certain things I don't know that they're able to do that, you know, you may never be able to do. It's the same thing with the Tyson Fury or Anthony Joshua, and it's the same thing with Alexander Usyk as well. I just don't know if Anthony Joshua has the gifts of an Alexander Usyk mentally and, you know, intellectually in terms of a boxing match, but we'll see what happens. Round. He... And on top of that, it's not like this is a T. Fima Lopez versus Vasily Lomachenko type of matchup because at the end of the day, Alexander Usyk, yes, he's smaller than Anthony Joshua, but he has better punch resistance for the heavyweight division than what Vasily Lomachenko does at 135. And on top of that, Alexander Usyk can compete with their reaches. He's a person that, of course, has a 4 to 5 inch reach disadvantages uh, against Anthony Joshua or some of these other bigger guys. But he is six foot three. He has a 78 reach, reach advantage. Or excuse me, he has a 78 inch reach. So that means that he can somewhat compete with them. Lomachenko is going to be more difficult for him because he has about a 65 and a half inch reach. So that means that every time that he's going in there against a taller and lengthier opponent... He's always putting himself at risk to possibly getting knocked out because his arms are actually very, very short for his size. But off the canvas, and once he shook the cobwebs off, he knew what he needed to do. Whereas with Anthony Joshua, he seems like one of those fighters. Amir Khan is a bit like this. He seems like one of those fighters where he needs to be programmed by a trainer to fight a specific strategy and in a specific way. And if the fight ends up going very differently to what they'd planned for in training camp. He doesn't know what to do. He doesn't seem to have the ability to adapt on the fly. I would agree. Uh, and you know what? <laughs> you know what actually is a great comparison to Anthony Joshua, and a lot of people may disagree with this. I don't think that Anthony Joshua in his prime was ever as skilled as this guy, but you know who I would compare him to? Because there's so many people, once again, that like to trash Anthony Joshua. They like to compare him to an Amir Khan or a Frank Bruno, you know, people who pretty much lost every big fight in their career. I'll give Anthony Joshua a lot of credit. Like I said, he's won the majority of the big fights in his career. He just lost the injuries in that first fight. And then, of course, lost to a tremendous fighter in Alexander Usyk. You know who Anthony Joshua actually reminds me of? Mike Tyson. Because Mike Tyson was actually a very similar fighter. Now, they didn't necessarily have the same style. <laughs> but when it comes down to it, the reason why he reminds me of Mike Tyson is because Mike Tyson, overall, he was basically a very similar, you know, kind of monster. Basically, what Mike Tyson was, he was basically a Terminator. He basically was... Customato's Frankenstein monster. He was built up overall very, very well. He was trained extremely well, all in all, by Mr. Customato. And I think that his fight intuition was probably greater than that overall of an Anthony Joshua's. But there's a reason why Mike Tyson, in some of the fights where they didn't work out, he never could really adapt that well. He always had the same game plan, <laughs> you know, and if he couldn't bully you, if he couldn't, you know, overall use his power to get to you, most of the time he was going to lose that fight, whether it be against Buster Douglas, Lennox Lewis, or Vander Holyfield. There's a reason why Mike Tyson didn't win any of those fights. And work things out for himself. He's constantly relying on the trainer to tell him what to do. And for a guy with the experience that Anthony Joshua has now, again, 40-odd amateur fights, 
ABA champion, silver medal in the world championships, gold medal in the Olympics, multiple world title fights as a pro, two-time world heavyweight champion. I mean, why doesn't he trust his own experience? You know, why hasn't all that experience resulted in intuition, instincts? Because all it because to be quite honest with you, I think Anthony Joshua, not only is he afraid of getting knocked out by a certain amount of his opponents, because I think he knows that he does not have an A-grade chin, and a part of that may be because of that first Andrew Weiss loss. But you can just tell when Anthony Joshua, when he does fight certain fighters, he does have a little bit of a problem adjusting to certain fighters. You know, I'm, that's not me saying that necessarily he won't have a plan B, but if the fighter is going to give him a lot of problems in that fight, he does have a problem adjusting. It's very, very similar to that of a Deontay Wilder. Intuition is, of course, is the subconscious mind processing all the data that you've collated over a certain period of time. And then you consciously experience the calculations made by the subconscious mind as a feeling. Okay, I feel like I need to do this. I feel like I need to do that. Okay, I know that I need to change the strategy up in this way because of what's happened in the fight so far. You see it. Anthony Joshua just doesn't seem to have those strong boxing instincts at all. He comes across like a guy. I don't think that he is. I don't think that he's a person that has extreme high boxing IQ. Like I said, I think he has more boxing IQ than that of a Deontay Wilder. But that's not saying much. <laughs> that's like saying all in all that you, but you got a better grade than overall, you know, the kid that got the worst score in class. <laughs> so it is what it is. It's no offense against Deontay Wilder, but he's never really been known for his boxing IQ. Really, he's never been known for his overall IQ anyway, but <laughs> it is what it is. But anyways, when it comes down to, like I said, Anthony Joshua, I wouldn't say that he's an idiot in terms of boxing, but he obviously feels more comfortable with his trainers overall convincing him of a game plan than what he is a compromising his own. Maybe earlier on in his career, he seemed a little bit more comfortable, but now that he's been in some of those bigger fights where some of those guys were able to expose some of his flaws, he does seem to have a little bit of a difficulty. But he is going to have to face, you know, with Alexander Usyk. Let me give Anthony Joshua this amount of credit. I do think that he does have some sort of intuition. I just don't think that it's on the same level as a Tyson Fury or a Muhammad Ali or, you know, some, some of the other great heavyweights that I've seen when it comes to that. What I will say is this. You know, Anthony Joshua, he seems to have a little bit of instincts, but he is going to have to get risks possibly getting knocked out in that rematch against Alexander Usyk because, like I said, you're not going to be able to outbox Alexander Usyk in the middle of the ring. This dude is faster than you. He has better feet than you. He has quicker feet than you. He has faster hands than you. He has a punch that can hurt you. He has better head movement. You know, he's more defensively responsible. So at the end of the day, you know, as certain people would say, sometimes you got to box, you know, the fighter and fight the boxer. And in this situation, Anthony Joshua is going to have to fight the boxer because he is not the boxer in this matchup. You know, he may be a boxer against a Joseph Parker. You know, he may be a boxer against Andrew Ruiz. He may be a boxer against those guys. Alexander Usyk is a person that's on a whole nother level in terms of boxing IQ and in terms overall, <laughs> you know, of the skill set that he has. And I'm not talking about overall just pressuring Alexander Usyk, but you're going to have to get certain combinations off on Alexander Usyk. I think people say that, oh, he has to fight like a heavyweight. He has to come in larger. I don't necessarily agree with that. But what I will say is this, Anthony Joshua, in my opinion, he is going to have to get certain punches off. There is going to have to be certain times if the round is very, very close where he says, you know what, I'm just going to have to bite the bullet. And if I take a shot, then I take a shot. It is what it is, you know. And a lot of people may think that that's not super duper intelligent. Listen, there's certain times to where, you know, because I've sparred before. I've never been in a professional boxing bout. But there's certain times to where the sparring match can be very, very close. And you say, okay, you know, I'm afraid to get hit because I've, I've never been a person that just loves getting hit in the face. <laughs> you, you know, usually when I spar, I usually tend to be a little bit more, more defensive when it comes down to it. But there's certain times where you're going to have to be a little bit more offensive you know, you be careful, you know, you have a great amount of prudence when it comes down to, you know, uh, make sure you try not to get hit, you try to be as defensively responsible as possible, but sometimes you're going to have to get in there, and if you believe all in all that you may get hit, you may have to risk it, it is what it is. Hey, you trying to learn boxing from a textbook. So what does that mean in my opinion? That means Anthony Joshua, he's going to have to go to Alexander Usyk's body with a jab, that means that sometimes that he's going to have to try to properly go in there and throw an uppercut or a hook to the body. You know, throw an uppercut to the body, hook up to the head, make him uncomfortable, put him on the back foot. You know, you're going to have to, you know, play a little bit with fire in this, you know, match. You know, it's, it's the same thing. Like, I remember the Jojo Diaz versus Devin Haney fight. The reason why Jojo Diaz lost that fight so clearly is it's not because Jojo Diaz is not a good fighter. It's not that, you know, he did not make the fight competitive, but he was not willing to play a little bit with fire. If you're in a boxing game or if you're in sports in general, when it comes down to it, 
sometimes you are going to have to really take risks. Just like with Sugar Ray Leonard and Tommy Hearns. Tommy Hearns was actually outboxing Sugar Ray Leonard in that first fight when it came down to it. And of course, his trainer eventually said, you're blowing it, son. You're blowing it. And basically, what did Sugar Ray Leonard eventually have to do? He had to go forward. He had to catch Tommy Hearns. And he had to knock him out. So sometimes, all in all, in order to be great or in order to win some of those bigger fights, you know, you're going to have to put it all on the line. It's bizarre. Again, with an inexperienced novice, you can understand that to some degree. Although some novices are very intuitive right away. I mean, right off the street, there are certain novices who get in there and the way they're moving around, that they instantly have good instincts. Their technique is all over the place. I agree. That's why I say, you know, when people say all in all that, oh, you can do anything you want, it just takes hard work. That's true to a certain point, but there are certain people all in all, like I said, you know, not everyone can be a professional boxer. Not everyone can be a professional football player. I'll talk about this football player, for example. For those of you all in all that know the Carolina Panthers, and the Carolina Panthers are my favorite team to watch. You know, that's my team because I like the Carolina areas. There was a very, very great defensive player, all-time great defensive player, that played there in the 2010s by the name of Luke Kuechly. He was a middle linebacker. And Luke Kuechly, everyone would always say about him that he may be debatably the smartest NFL player that they've ever played with or that they've ever seen. Every single play overall that the offense would run, Luke Kuechly would basically call out. Even all in all, if you're a person that, you know, studies a lot of football and studies a lot of the patterns, you can somewhat learn it. But Luke Kuechly, there's just certain people in football that they can read plays like no other defensive players could read plays. Luke Kuechly was one of those players. Luke Kuechly, in terms of NFL defensive players, he pretty much was like, you know, on that Canelo Alvarez level in terms of, you know, knowing what to do, just natural intuition, natural ability. It was the same thing that I've seen with Luke Kuechly in football. You know, it is what it is. But they have a good idea. Or with the Tom Brady or Aaron Rodgers in, you know, football. They're like, there's certain quarterbacks, for example, that, you know, they, they just get it more than others. You know, they just overall know what to do more than others. Or all in all, they understand their system more than others. Or they know overall how to win more than others. Whether it be Aaron Rodgers, Patrick Mahomes, or, you know, Tom Brady. You know, that's what puts them on the highest elite level. Here of what they need to do and when. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <clears throat> Whereas Anthony Joshua just doesn't seem to have a strong idea about what to do and when and why. It's like in the first Andy Ruiz fight. When he said to Rob McCracky, you know, what do I do now? Why do I feel like this? You don't hear Tyson Fury having them kind of conversations and asking those kind of questions when he's in the corner. No, you don't. Because once again, Tyson Fury, and I don't give a shit what anyone likes to say about Tyson Fury at the end of the day, you know, whatever these new media channels like to say about him. Tyson Fury is one of the most, he is one of the most intelligent boxers on the planet Earth. That doesn't always mean that he puts on impressive performances, but Tyson Fury can adapt on the fly. He was able to make it out of all three of those Deontay Wilder fights. He also was able to completely embarrass that of a Vladimir Klitschko. So in terms of boxing IQ, Tyson Fury, he has very, very high boxing IQ. And especially for his size, you don't expect someone that is about 6'9", 270, 280 pounds to move around and be as fast as he is. He's been drunk. He knows what to do. You know? His corner's there to offer him more advice but ultimately Tyson Fury is very self-assured Muhammad Ali very self-assured Floyd Mayweather very self-assured in any situation he's very self-assured you never see them looking lost in the ring whereas AJ has looked lost in the ring several times and he looks lost in interviews <laughs> you know all this talk about self-help books and motivational speakers and listening to the right music I mean maybe that's his process and different fighters have a different process in terms of getting ready for a fight just because AJ's process might that's why a lot of these guys when it comes down to when they were talking about that Deontay Wilder Tyson Fury fight and they said well if Deontay if he would have you know done the things that he did in training you know with Malik Scott against Tyson Fury he would have won it hands down and of course I was a Deontay Wilder fanboys talking and Aki TV for example he said well if Deontay Wilder if he would have trained with Floyd Mayweather Jr he would have won that fight hands down you can go with almost whatever coach you want to. There's just some certain people, they're not going to have that boxing intelligence. It is what it is. <laughs> you know, it just it just is what it is. You know, like, you know, there's certain, you know, people all in all, like I said, you know, you can you can tell them the same amount of information. You know, you can you can overall, you know, tell them the exact same amount of information. There's some people that are gonna get what you're talking about. There's gonna be some people that have no idea what the hell you're talking about. It just is what it is. Like I said, some people they just have naturally better intelligence for other things. It just is what it is be a bit different to the norm than 
you know, it doesn't necessarily mean it's wrong or it's bad. But I have to be honest, he doesn't inspire confidence with the way he comes across. <laughs> That's what I can tell you. Because, you know, I'm Let me let you in on a little secret here. All of these online gurus out there have it backwards. So, for instance... I'm comparing him to other fighters out there. Even somebody like Dylan White. You know, Derek Chisora, these kind of guys. Not necessarily the elite, but guys who have been able to bounce back and show mental fortitude coming back from defeat. I mean, Dylan White, from a mental perspective, was absolutely fantastic the way he came back against Povetkin. Say what you want about Povetkin being old and... You know, he looks shaky. What I'll say is this, and I agree with what he's saying about the Povetkin versus Dillian White fight. To beat Povetkin after you got knocked out like that, terrific performance. Anthony Joshua, he did, let me say this, because a lot of people, once again, they always like to criticize Anthony Joshua and say how mentally weak he is, blah, blah, blah. Listen, anyone who was able to come back against Andrew Ruiz the way that he was able to, and I understand that he really didn't do much more than peck and nip at him throughout that fight with the jab in the right hand, I get it. But at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, he was able to come back in a very, very good way. So Anthony Joshua, he has something to be proud about, but I'm not necessarily sure if the question is about mental fortitude or if it's about if Anthony Joshua just not trusting his own abilities. Now, some people may say that that is a part of mental fortitude when it comes down to it, but Anthony Joshua, I think that he realizes with Alexander Usyk, he said, wow, this dude is just fast. And on top of that, not only is he fast, you know, he's, he's giving me a lot of faints when it comes down to it. You know, he can hurt me when it comes down to, you know, his feet are so quick. He's quick. He moves really good. It's hard to hit him, you know, so it just is what it is. Anthony Joshua, I don't think that his mental fortitude is anywhere near as weak as what a lot of people try to say. But what I will say is this, his boxing intellect, in my opinion, could be better. He in the first fight. There's some people, in my opinion, that are very, very mentally tough, but they may not be that intelligent for whatever they're doing. Like Russell Westbrook, for example. Russell Westbrook doesn't give a shit what you say about him. <laughs> he's going to go out there, you know, he's going to try to get 30 points, 10 rebounds, and 10 assists. He's going to try to be that triple-double fiend. He'll, you know, he'll shoot 39% or 42% from the field. <laughs> but at the end of the day, you know, he'll still try to get that ball out there. But Russell Westbrook, he's never going to get it. He's never going to get overall how to play within a system and trust the other players and all in all, you know, overall play within the flow of a game. And Russell Westbrook is usually never going to win a championship with anyone anyway because he's just so, you know, non-proficient. He's a person that shoots about 41, 42% from the field overall. And on top of that, from three, he's horrific. So it just is what it is. But Dylan White still had to overcome the trauma of being knocked out the way that he was in such a humiliating fashion first time around. And he had absolutely no problems doing that whatsoever. There was no perceptible demons or anything like that in the Povetkin fight. So, you know, that type of mindset, that type of mentality is what Anthony Joshua needs. <laughs> you know, when Dylan White came back from the Povetkin loss, he was 100% self-assured in terms of knowing what he needed to do. The way he was speaking was just confident. He wasn't saying, I need self-help books and I need to read this and I need to listen to this and I'm going to trial out with a hundred different trainers. Listen, what I'll say is this. Anthony Joshua, like I said, I do somewhat agree with what Hangman is saying. And what he's really saying is that Anthony Joshua does need better mental fortitude. I think that that's a part of it. But, you know, there's been certain times where I've competed in something and I felt that I got my ass whooped completely in something, whether it be, you know, I'm not necessarily talking about sparring, but, you know, maybe even sometimes in sparring or other times. And I said, you know what? I know what I did wrong. And even if I got my ass whooped that first time, I said, you know, I'm going to do a lot better at least the second go around. Maybe I won't win it. Maybe I will when it comes down to it. But at least I have a better chance because I know what I'm going to do. That's why all in all, it's very good all in all to study and, you know, be intuitive. But of course, intuition does not come across to everyone. Or all in all, you know, intuition or great intuition, you know, to the point to where it is really reliable. That's not something that everyone is born with. That's not, a, you know, something that everyone is gifted with. You know, it just is what it is. And I'm not saying that, you know, I'm super duper intuitive with just everything when it comes on it. But I'm intuitive enough all in all, you know, with certain things to where I can figure how to, you know, dig myself out of a hole. <laughs> you know, it is the same thing all in all with a certain amount of other people, you know, maybe even with a certain amount of you. You know, depending on, you know, whatever, you know, you participate in. But Anthony Joshua, in my opinion, the way that he talks, he talks basically like a person, you know, that basically does not have confidence within his own abilities if the game plan basically falls through. So what that tells me is that Anthony Joshua, maybe it's not even necessarily mental fortitude, 
but it could be his boxing IQ. There was none of that. He knew exactly what he needed to do. With Anthony Joshua again, yeah, trial out with different trainers. I've been saying for the longest time he needs to get rid of Rob McCracken. No disrespect to Rob, but I don't think he's the guy to take Anthony Joshua to the next level. I think Anthony Joshua... I don't think that he is either. Uh, and basically, Robert McCracken, he already took Anthony Joshua as far as he could go. Anthony Joshua is the former unified, two-time unified, you know, heavyweight champion of the world. Anthony Joshua is great in his own right. He has nothing to be ashamed of. But if Anthony Joshua is going to be on that elite, elite level and be remembered up there with the Tyson Furies, the Lennox Lewis's, and the Muhammad Ali's, you know, and some people may say, well, why are you comparing Tyson Fury to them? Just because as of right now, he is the current best heavyweight of the generation. That's not me necessarily saying that Tyson Fury is the greatest heavyweight of all time or anything like that. But what I, what I am saying is this. He's clearly a great fighter. He needs to learn new techniques okay well learning new techniques is not the same as having good boxing instincts you see it i'm sure when floyd mayweather first stepped into a boxing ring he had good boxing instincts to begin with good fighting instincts just intuitively just innately he had good instincts and obviously you hone those instincts and those instincts improve the intuition improves the more experience you get but uh Again, with AJ, it's just like, he's, he has the mindset of a novice. It's bizarre. This guy is bordering on veteran at this point. <laughs> well, like I said, when it comes down to it, and some people, they'll take a look at Anthony Joshua and they'll say that it's bizarre. I don't think it's really that bizarre. Like I said, there's just certain people that they're just never going to get it. Like I said, Anthony Joshua, I think that he is a great boxer. I, I really do. I think that he's good for what he is. But it's the same thing with Deontay Wilder. You know, Deontay Wilder was never going to be Muhammad Ali. <laughs> he was never going to be, you know, someone all in all that was as skilled as Mike Tyson or anything like that. You know, that's what separates, you know, certain people with levels. That's what separates the Tyson Furies from the rest of the crowd or the Alexander Usyk's from the rest of the crowd. Because those guys have something that the rest of the people overall usually don't have. And that is not only the skills, but the boxing IQ. And you notice the people all in all that usually have the higher boxing IQ, they usually have more skills. Right, it is what it is because they know what to do. They know what's required. In terms of the number of championships. Like, let, let me say this, for example, when it comes down to, you know, I've sparred a certain amount of people on and on boxing. Let me tell you this. Now, once again, <laughs> I've, I've never, you know, claimed to be, you know, a professional level boxer or anything like that. But what I will say is this, you know, certain, you know, people that I spar with, I've sparred with a certain amount of friends when it comes down to it, you know, whether it be at the gym or, you know, just some other place when it comes down to it. And, you know, we've sparred. And one thing that you notice about me, if you were to ever watch me box, like I said, I'm not a professional level or anything like that. But, you know, I always tend to move my head, you know, all in all, I probably could keep my hands up a little bit more because sometimes, you know, I use that overall for hand speed. But when it comes down to it, you know, I tend to move my head a little bit, you know, my, my feet overall are decently, you know, I, I don't want to say quick, but, you know, they move decently well. I don't have extremely poor footwork. But then I box some of my friends who, you know, and then they may say, oh, well, you know, let's have a sparring match and maybe you can teach me a couple of things because they know all in all that, you know, I've been involved in it with quite a while. And my father, of course, he was a uh, guy that used to participate in boxing and also uh, some mixed martial arts as well. So he would train me a little bit, you know, while I was growing up when it came down to it. So basically I would participate in it when it came down to it. And, you know, one thing I noticed about them is that very flat feet, you know, and on top of that, I would try to teach them head movement, but... They would just all usually be very, very stiff. So like I said, certain people, they'll take a look at a boxing match. They'll go in the ring when it comes down to it. And they're just a natural from the get-go. Other people, it takes them years upon years upon years to get there. And sometimes they may never even get there. It just is what it is. Like if you take a look overall at a fight, you can take a look, say, at uh, like I said, I'm trying to think of a comparison here. We can take a look at David Benavides, for example. We can take a look at David Benavides and, you know, Canelo Alvarez, and we can say, well, David Benavides, you know, let's say that he's starting to get into his 30th something fight because I don't think he's there yet. We can take a look at David Benavides and say, you know, well, you know, David, you know, he's getting, he's getting to be a veteran at this point. Why doesn't he have the counterpunching ability and why doesn't he all in all have the head movement of a Canelo Alvarez? You know, like, this is embarrassing. Like, you know, well, like, why, why aren't you doing that? The reason why that is is because, like I said, not everyone is on the same level. <laughs> Canelo is one of those, you know, guys that is just a, he's a clear natural. He's a person to where he was just born to do what he's going to do, you know. And there's a certain amount of other boxers that may not be on the same level that are probably born to be fighters as well, but they're just not on the same level. When I take a look at Sewell Canelo Alvarez, when I take a look at Terrence Bud Crawford, when I take a look at those fighters, for example, when I whenever I take a look at their performance, I say, wow. You know, this dude, he, he just has a natural gift in boxing. You know, it's the same thing if I were to watch 
Tom Brady in football or Aaron Rodgers or, you know, Drew Brees, you know, I just take a look at them and I say, wow, you know, just the way that they're able to do it. They were born to do what they do. Fights he's had. And Roy Jones Jr. is another great example. Now, Roy Jones Jr., <laughs> he wasn't always known for having a great elite defense because he would keep his hands down a lot. Another, you know, example, maybe you could use is Prince Nassim Hamed. Prince Nassim Hamed, now he, he, in my opinion, is not necessarily someone that I would put on the all-time great level, but he was a very talented athlete. You know, he was very gifted with his athleticism. And you can even tell that Prince Nassim Hamed, he was a natural. Because in my opinion, with whatever trainer or coach that he had, he probably was not overall trained that very well because Prince Nassim Hamed, his defense overall was never there. He never kept his hands up. His defense was very similar to that of Roy Jones Jr. It was his movements. It was his reflexes. It was his athleticism. And it was also his power. That's why I only finally fought a very decent boxer, Marco Antonio Barrera, someone that could get past that, you know, he really had no other game plan. The experience. He's borderline. And Anthony Joshua, you can tell to a degree, especially with the physique, he's somewhat of a natural in boxing. It's the same thing with Deontay Wilder. You can tell that, you know, they have a little bit of that natural ability, especially with the athleticism, but they just don't have the same level of boxing IQ as some of the other boxers that I've seen. And veteran now, but still talks like he's... uh wet behind the ears student you know very very strange so i don't know what the solution is for anthony joshua i don't think it's good for him to still be trialing different trainers this late in the day because aren't they talking about the usec fight in april or something april may i mean he needs to be settled with one trainer at this point not still trialing out all these different no i mean ideally as i've said all along I think Anthony Joshua should not take the rematch because that would give him time. You see it? That would give him time to figure out what... I would somewhat agree with you, but Anthony Joshua is going to take the rematch because, of course, you know, whenever you get your ass whooped in something, you know, you want revenge immediately or you want a chance to prove yourself. So I get it. But sometimes, you know, you may have to swallow that loss and you may have to say, you know what? Maybe a rematch isn't what's best for me right now. But <laughs> his corner, his management team, I believe Eddie Hearn, they, they're signing off in the rematch. So at the end of the day, unfortunately for Joshua, he's probably going to be setting himself overall for, I don't, I don't want to say failure because he does have a chance. You know, he is a good fighter. But when it comes down to it, you know, he, he's going to have a very tall task ahead of him. I'll just say that. What he's doing, what trainer he's going to go with. But at this point, it's like a race against the clock. <laughs> where he's trying to do all the self-help books and trialing out different trainers and traveling all over the world and the clock is ticking for that Usyk because Usyk is not confused right now. Usyk isn't wondering how he's going to get... Usyk has a very high level of confidence within himself. He's a very highly intuitive boxer. He knows what to do. He has a very exten extensive and expansive amateur background and a lot of those boxers, they just know what, they know what to do on the fly. You know, you know what fight actually was a, a all-time great fight, which actually happened in the, I believe the year two thousand thirteen, uh, the Alfredo Angulo versus Arisani Lara fight. Once again, for those of you that have known my channel for quite a while, Arisani Lara has been one of my favorite fighters to ever watch because he really was such a defensive wizard. I think all in all in his prime, you know, Arisani Lara, in my opinion, he really all in all was you know really really on a higher level, you know, than than a lot of other defensive boxers. You know, like a lot of people, they try to say that Demetrius Andre and Jamal Charlo, that, you know, oh, those guys are the real... Arizona Lara, in my opinion, was even on a higher level than them in terms of defensive responsibility and the slickness and the footwork that he would have. Uh, but Arizona Lara, I remember when, I remember just like it was yesterday when he fought Alfredo Ngulu. And Lara was mainly winning the fight, but it was somewhat competitive. And Lara actually got knocked down a couple times in that fight. But the strange thing about it was that Alara, he got right back up in his bicycle. He overall got right back up. He was moving around him, setting up traps, setting up, you know, certain counter punches. You know, he did get knocked down twice. But the funny thing is, is that Laura never not, he never lost confidence after that because I think he knew overall what to do. But Laura is a person that he just, you can tell that he just has naturally high boxing IQ, had naturally high boxing ability. You know, and those Cuban fighters, <laughs> you know, they gave everyone hell. Himself in the right mind frame for the rematch. Usek's routine is tried and tested. He knows exactly what to do. It's AJ who is all over the place, seemingly, right now. So, look, I'm not writing him off. Maybe he'll be able to get himself together in time for the fight and pull off what, I don't want to call it an upset, but let's just say reverse the result of the first fight when a lot of people are expecting Usek to repeat.
what happened in the first fight and maybe even go one better and stop AJ this time. So, you know, I'm not counting AJ out. Perhaps he can turn up and do the business. But, again, not inspiring confidence by the way he's talking in this interview. I certainly agree with what Hatman has to say. I just don't think personally that Anthony Joshua, I don't think that he has the boxing IQ. And because he doesn't have the boxing IQ, it's basically a person like, you know, if you were to 1v1 someone overall in basketball versus like a Michael Jordan or someone, or let's, you know, let's compare it overall to a person that, you know, plays basketball today. If you were to 1v1, you know, against like a LeBron James or a Stephen Curry, you know, or a Giannis Antetokounmpo or a Kawhi Leonard, you know, let's say if you're around their same size, let's say that one of those players or Kevin Durant, you know, they, they were to uh, 1v1, say someone like a Russell Westbrook, they more than likely would probably beat Russell Westbrook when, when it comes down to it, you know, when it comes, you know, or, or maybe another player, you know, and at the end of the day, those players, you know, they may be like, damn, you know, this, this dude just has something over me that, you know, I just don't have. And they may lose confidence. They may all in all, you know, may say, well, coach, what do I do? Because at the end of the day, there's only so much that that person has in terms of the IQ for the sport, because like I said, a lot of the top level guys, no matter what sport you're looking at, or no matter what profession you're looking at, they have a natural intuition for that ability. It just is what it is. Maybe his method, maybe his process is just different from the norm, and that doesn't necessarily make it bad. But again, I'm just comparing him to many other fighters out there who have come back from defeats successfully. Uh, a lot of the greats, the Muhammad Ali's and so on. I know that not everybody's cocky right not everybody's a uh, uh, slick talk quitting my online businesses was one of the best things i've ever done you see five years ago i was a broke bartender making eight talker and what have you aj is certainly not a slick talker but even if you don't have the flair to be able to express yourself like a muhammad ali the things you say the body language the things that you tell us you're doing that we can still read a certain amount into these things you know and i hope my read of anthony joshua's preparation and Ant what anthony joshua said in this interview is wrong because <laughs> my read of it is this is a confused guy who isn't confident enough in the experience he's gained himself to be able to stand on his own two feet he's still looking for well unfortunately had men i do believe that you're right on the money to be quite honest with you because i have the same interpretation because I do think Anthony Joshua is somewhat confused. Because Anthony Joshua, he's really reached his limit. He's reached his peak. He can't really go any further. You know, like I said, there's certain people to where, like I said, Russell Westbrook. And I don't mean to, you know, beat a dead horse here. But like I said, you know, no matter their profession, you know, for certain people, you know, in a, in a profession, there's a reason why there's certain people like in football or in basketball, you know, some people win championships, some people don't. You know, if you talk about boxing, some people are champions, some people are not. Some people are multiple weight division champions, some other people do not have that ability. You know, it just is what it is. You know, some people are able to win their big A grade fights like a Canelo Alvarez, you know, or an Errol Spence Jr. Other people who may be around the same size like an Adrian Broner, whenever they face that elite, you know, high grade IQ fighter, they're always going to blow it. Or maybe not blow it. I, I actually, you know, to be quite honest with you, I shouldn't even say blow it. But they're just not going to win that because they don't have a higher level to get to. It just is what it is. Master to tell him what to do. No, the trainer is supposed to get you to, you know, change up your technique in a certain way, right? But you're still inside supposed to be confident because of the experience you have, that you know what to do, that you know what strategy to employ. It's just about, again, polishing up your technique, changing certain technical things, in order to be able to do that most effectively. You know, the strategy that you already know you need to employ. Now, AJ's talked about, oh, I need to go and attack and this, that, and the other. But whenever he talks about it, he sounds like he's repeating things he's heard from someone else. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It doesn't seem to be coming from the heart. It doesn't seem to be coming from inst I think that Anthony Joshua had much better intuition on how to defeat Andrew Ruiz. Because once again, Anthony Joshua, he's not a stupid boxer. He's not someone, in my opinion, that has very low IQ. He's just not a person all in all in the Floyd Mayer, the junior, like Canelo Alvarez level. Those are the guys that have extremely high boxing IQ. Like if we were to rank their, you know, IQ from 1 to 100, Canelo Alvarez and Floyd Mayer, the junior, they have like 99 to 100 boxing IQ. Anthony Joshua, he doesn't have, you know, extremely low boxing IQ. But his boxing IQ is around probably like the 80 percentile at most. Instinct. And it's just like <clears throat> Amir Khan, he has to be programmed with a particular strategy, with a particular approach, 
And when the fight doesn't go according to plan, he doesn't know what to do. <laughs> and if the trainer don't have the answers, AJ's lost. He and I think Anthony Joshua, when it comes down to it, I think that he fears this rematch even more than what he did in the Andrew Ruiz fight, or at least debatably, because Alexander Usyk is a completely different animal. Like I said, this is a dude that has, he just has much more of a tool set than what Andrew Ruiz Jr. is. Like I said, Andrew Ruiz, very dangerous. You know, but like I said, if you're able to stay away from him, very limited fighter, very limited fighter, very good on the inside. But, you know, like I said, and there's a certain amount of Mexican fighters like that, you know, to where they're extremely good on the inside. If they get close to you, excellent counter punches, excellent hand speed, you know, very tough, very durable. But if you're able to move around them in a certain way, they can't catch you because they may not have the most elite feet. Can't figure it out for himself. At the elite level, you better learn how to figure it out for yourself. Yeah? Your trainer won't always have the answers. When Tyson Fury again fought Steve Cunningham, Clifton Mitchell was in his corner. No disrespect to Clifton Mitchell, right? But that wasn't Tyson Fury's regular trainer. It was Peter Fury. Clifton Mitchell was one of the seconds. Uh, but Tyson Fury figured it out for himself. So anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Are you as concerned... As I am, with regards to the stuff AJ is saying in his interviews, do you get the same impression that I get? That this is a guy who's just not very self-assured and not very confident in what he's doing? And he's just looking for external answers when most of the answers are actually internal? Let me know what you think in the comments. But anyways, I thought that that was a very, very interesting video. And the last little part that Hatman said, if he's asking it, you know, is he looking for a lot of outside answers when the answers are truly internal? Basically, what that means is that the person is lost. And if you're in a profession all in all to where, you know, you're at that point to where you're asking a lot of other people, hey, what do I do? I don't think that that's necessarily a bad thing. But what that does tell me a little bit is that Anthony Joshua, like I said, he's pretty much le he's pretty much reached his peak in terms of boxing IQ, at least at this current moment in time. And the Alexander Usyk fight, that fight's going to be a bitch for Anthony Joshua because he's facing a dude that is just all around more talented than him, in my opinion at least in terms of boxing skills, and on top of that, a very complete fighter, and someone who is very self-assured and very intuitive in the ring. Every time Alexander Usyk has fought someone, even the more talented opponents, even if they gave him a little bit of problems, he would come back and he would usually completely outperform them, whether it be a Michael Hunter or Derek Kisora or Tony Bellew, you know, so we'll see what happens. But anyways, that's pretty much my opinion on this video. I just thought that that would be very interesting to talk about. Very good video by the Hatman Strikes Back, in my opinion. I pretty much agree with him in this certain situation. But we'll see all know what happens. And I do hope for the best for Anthony Joshua. But we'll see what happens. Anyways, that's all about it for today. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll talk to you all later.